Hi everyone, and welcome back to another Fresh Look Friday. I'm Miss Laura, and today I have junior fiction, middle grade novels to share with you today, all about food and cooking and baking and restaurants. So if you like food, if you like watching Top Chef Junior, um, this uh, these are the books for you. I am a huge cooking show fan. I love reading food fiction. So this was super fun for me to put together for you today. So the first one is called The Donut Fix. I loved this book so much. There's a sequel to it called The Donut King. I loved it so much that as soon as I finished this book, I immediately started reading the sequel. And because of that, the whole story kind of like melds together in my brain as one book. Um, I can't really remember where one book ends and one book starts. That's how well written they are and how well they flow together. Um, so The Donut Fix is about Tristan. Tristan lives in New York City with his family um, and he makes the perfect chocolate chip cookie and he loves it and he loves going out to eat to all the different places in New York. He's in heaven. Well, his family decides to move to a very small town called Petersville and Tristan feels lost. He doesn't, there's no restaurants here. Like what is he supposed to do? And he's just like not into it. Well, there's a general store in Petersville that apparently sells life changing chocolate cream donuts. And the town is small and kind of dying. People aren't living there. They're moving away. There's not a lot of restaurants and stores, as I said. Um, so Tristan decides he's going to get the recipe from the general store for these life-changing chocolate cream donuts and make them and sell them and save the town. So he starts on this epic adventure of making donuts and trying to sell them. And businesses are a lot harder to run than he thought. It, it's a great book. You read through it very fast and you'll want to know what happens enough to pick up the second book. And there are recipes in the back of this book for those chocolate chip cookies I mentioned and for the chocolate cream donuts. So there's lots of recipes in the back. So if you are into baking, you could try it out. The donut fix. Next, we have Summer of a Thousand Pies. Oh, this book. I love this book so much. It's one of those books that I just want to hug. I love recommending it to people. It's got kind of a similar premise in that there's a kid um, who, Katie, um, who goes from living in a big city to a small town, but it's very different. Katie's family is not at all like Tristan's. Um, Katie is being raised by her father and she's experiencing a lot of homelessness because her dad does not have everything together and he actually ends up getting arrested and going to jail, which leaves Katie with nowhere to go, except she has an aunt that she had no idea she had. So she goes to live with this aunt in this small town. So she, for the very first time in her life that she can remember, she has someplace to live. She, it is safe. There's always food on the table. She does not need to worry about things getting taken away from her. She is warm. She is loved. And it's something that she loves experiencing. And she finds out that her, her aunt named Shell owns a pie shop. Now, what Katie loves to do is read cookbooks. She loves cookbooks, but she's never had the opportunity to cook or bake because she's been experiencing a lot of homelessness in her life. Aunt Shell gives her that opportunity. The two of them share a love for the Great British Bake Off. They watch that together. So if you like that show, you'll definitely love this book. Um, and then Shell encourages her to start baking and challenges her to bake a thousand pies before the summer is over. So that is exactly what Katie is going to do. So there's a lot of um, welcoming feeling about belonging in this book. Um, if you like stories about families and found families, this is definitely the story for you. Again, if you like The Great British Bake Off, I pick this up. Um, it's a great realistic read and the back again has all of Katie's recipes and pie recipes. So you can always challenge yourself to make a pie at the end. The Summer of a Thousand Pies. Next, we have Honestly Elliot. This is a brand new book. I read it before it was published. I really, really enjoyed it. 
So Elliot has a lot of issues and he's a lot of, he feels alone a lot of the time and misunderstood a lot of the time. He has ADHD and he really struggles with um, figuring that out and, and trying to go through life without it like running his life. Um, he is really lonely. His parents are divorced, but they're both remarried. Um, his dad um, and his new wife just found out that they're pregnant. So Elliot's going to get a new little brother or sister, and this is just like all a lot for him to process. He doesn't really listen well in school. It's hard for him to concentrate. And he has this big school project coming up, and he's partnered with someone that he doesn't really know how that's going to work, the most popular girl in school, Maribel. And so he's really struggling. The one place that he does find focus that he can make things make sense for him is the kitchen. He loves cooking. That's his safe space, his safe space. So together, he and Maribel for their school project decide to do cooking, baking, somehow put that into their school project. So this is a great story about how food and the process of cooking can really save you, can focus you, can make you see what you have in your life that really, really matters. Um, it's a great friendship story, and it's a great story about a kid with ADHD and how he copes with that. Honestly, Elliot. Then, changing things up drastically, I have a graphic novel. This is called Chef Yasmina and the Potato Panic. And it is definitely not your typical food fiction. Um, it's a cool graphic novel with lots of pictures, and it's like science fiction based. So if you're into sci-fi stuff, you should read this book. So Chef Yasmina, Yasmina, um, this is her. She lives with her dad, who is single, um, and she loves to cook. But her dad works at a fast food place. They don't make a lot of money. So she has friends that have community gardens, and that's where she gets all of her food. She gets tons of vegetables and stuff from them and is able to create wonderful meals with those vegetables. Well, these gardens are destroyed by this big company who are making this, like, magical food that's supposed to, like, um, like basically cure your hunger, but there's a side effect. These potato chips that they make make people act like dogs, like licking, sniffing, going crazy. So now you can't even find real food. The only thing you can find are these crazy potato chips everywhere. So Chef Yasmina and these community garden folks team up together to figure out what is going on with these potato chips and why are people acting insane like dogs? So she definitely, there's an adventure, like I said, a science fiction aspect. If you like graphic novels, I check this out. Chef Yasmina and the Potato Panic. And finally, my last one is called Maisie Chen's Last Chance. So this is about Maisie. She lives in LA, but she and her mom decide for the summer to go to Minnesota, Last Chance, Minnesota, where her mom's parents live, Maisie's grandparents. They own a restaurant. And they decide to stay there for the summer because her grandfather is sick. She's not really sure how sick or what's going on, but her mom and her grandma are having like whispered conversations a lot. Um, it's a great summer for Maisie. She's really missing LA, but she gets to be in a restaurant around food, which she loves. She's learning a lot about her grandparents and their history. There's all these pictures around the restaurant of these people that she had no idea who they are. Um, and she starts figuring out that they have a very special connection to this restaurant. Um, she, because they are in Last Chance, Minnesota, which is this small town, um, they're about the only Asian family there, and there's a lot of racist things happening. Um, there's notes left at their restaurant, um, there's graffiti. It's not a great thing. So she's learning about that learning about how to handle racism and learning about all the racism that her grandparents dealt with when they came to America and had to deal, make their own restaurant and what that meant for them. So it's a cool book about the ins and outs of running a restaurant. It's a cool generational story about grandparents and um, kids and learning about the history of your family. So there's a little bit of historical fiction tossed into this as well. I really, really enjoyed it. Maisie Chen's Last Chance. And that's all I have for you today. I hope there's something here that you really like. If nothing appeals to you, come on in. I am bound and determined to find a book that's perfect for you. So I'll hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye.